super excited to have Toby Penny with us here today. Um, she's come down from all over the world. To, she'll tell us where she's been. Um, and, uh, but she's sharing her work with us in Athens, Tennessee today in her exhibition entitled Evolution of Memory. So um, I know you and I spoke recently, Toby, about um, this whole evolution of memory idea and that there was a little bit of Alzheimer's in your past, but that's not what you were thinking about when you were making those paintings. Right, uh, there, it is a, a, we do have a family history of Alzheimer's and as I age and memory is a, mm -hmm. something that is obviously something that, that you have to consider how that changes mm -hmm. your life. Uh, what your memory, how it is useful to you or sometimes not useful to you, and then also seeing that in older members of the family and how their general life patterns change because of that mm -hmm. and what they, uh, what their priorities are. Mm -hmm. And so that is a lot of what I consider now that that's starting to be more prevalent. So you feel like this comes out subconsciously in your painting? I'm positive that it does. Mm -hmm. that <clears throat> family history has always been something that I, or just general personal histories and mythologies, personal mythologies, ideas and concepts that we're told about ourselves and how we develop because of those ideas, things that we're told as a child, you know, who's the, which, which sibling is the good sibling, which one's the smart one or the funny one or the pretty one or, you know, those are all elements that show up in the work and the process of um, developing the work. And now that I'm, you, I'm an adult and I've moved past some of those, and, you know, I realize that you don't have to be what you're told you are. You get to be the person that you are and you realize that you are. Um, I've, I've started considering what happens with those memories and those concepts as we age and you don't necessarily remember some of what we're given instead of what we claim. Is, is, mm -hmm. is that what you're asking? Yeah, so, so that is all here in your process of thinking about layering and uh, collage. And of course, you've got um, an extensive history in painting, having studied painting your whole life. You said even since a child, you've been painting, haven't stopped. But then you're um, your education is in sculpture. Um, do you want to talk about how these things are kind of all present in your paintings? Sure. So I do identify as a painter, even though now I think that, I mean, I just did a photography show in Australia and I do have my focus at school. But when I went back to school as an adult, my sculpture, early on I did study sculpture at UTC under Rock Buffington. I mean, my painting under Rock Buffington, so okay. I attribute a lot of my painting practice to mm -hmm. his encouragement. Um, I apologize, I forgot the exact so, question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, over the years, I have studied different techniques and uh, processes and different materials so that I could expand my visual language and communicate to a broader audience. In doing that, I did things like apprentice under a master printmaker for several years. I also worked under a master gilder and um, you know I started pulling from different aspects of those types of processes. Mm -hmm. uh, Antique restoration was something that we did quite a lot in the building workshop when we would build large scale frames and that mm -hmm. sort of thing so that laid a heavy impression on me. Also being from the south we as a culture I think we hold on to objects a little bit differently than a lot of parts of the world that uh, I've noticed and we traditionally it's I, I, I kind of think of it as a work of what you've got mentality coming from the south mm -hmm. and that I mean, what we have is all around us and so we pull from things that are you know cast off clothing or even mm -hmm. extra you know receipts or photographs you know different things that may be seen as clutter but obviously we have ties to them and so Incorporating that into the work, I believe, makes it relatable. It feels a little architectural. I mean, architectural, but also archaeological. Archaeological, um, for sure. Sorry, yeah. pulling. Uh, as I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm sort of digging in. Right. So then that is the thing. I mean, that, that as, a, as the maker, I'm building up, but mm -hmm. I 
consciously leave parts of each layer visible, mm -hmm. whether that's five layers or 25 layers. Okay. So each, a part of each layer is available to the viewer later. So it is more like they're digging in when I'm sort of building up. Perfect. Interesting kind of dichotomy. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so tell us, um, I know you're all over the world, uh, and uh, tell us just a little bit about, you know, where all you've been, where all you plan to go. Uh, tell us a little bit about your studio experience, how you have studios wherever you go. I think those are all So I, I do love to travel, I, and, I'm, and I feel privileged that I do get to do that quite a bit. Um, both my job and my spouse's job are flexible in that we can do what we do anywhere. And I was, uh, I guess what started the most recent bout of jumping around and traveling is that I did a residency in France a few years ago and met several artists that I have, that I connected with and we have done projects in different locations based on that initial um, residency. I stayed in Orgabeau, France at Chateau Orgabeau for a few weeks and uh, they have beautiful studios there in different parts of uh, renovated the Chateau and he's renovating stables. It's a really beautiful location. From there, uh, I've traveled in about 15 different countries creating work all over the all over mm -hmm. um, Europe and then most recently in Australia. Mm -hmm. I did two shows in Australia this fall. One was um, Palin's Let Wits with Rhiannon Hopley at the Penny Contemporary in Tasmania. That was a photography exhibit. And then I did a painting exhibit at the Mulberry Gallery in Melbourne. That was a, an interesting exhibit because I met the artist that I was showing with at Chateau of Bourg this past year, so I've been to, to France, to that specific location twice, and I usually stay anywhere between three and four or five weeks. And so, but I met uh, Sharon Monocle there last time, and she was kind enough to have me to her place in Melbourne, and she has a great studio, so she um, sponsored basically that. Uh, it's not an official residency, but it ended up being, you know, mm -hmm. being treated like one. Mm -hmm. She gave me a studio for several weeks, and then we put an exhibit together. And um, luckily, I, I believe I'll be able to go back over Wonderful. the next few years. Wonderful. And so that I know that I'll be showing with Penny Contemporary again in Tasmania. So that'll be fun. Now tell me about this Penny Contemporary. Yeah, so that was just a... a <laughs> a funny coincidence. Okay. We do spell it spell it differently. So I'm, I'm E Y, and that's just why. Okay. Um, and we uh, several years ago we had connected on social media, uh -huh. and she saw that I like to travel, and then she saw that I did an event at Chateau at War of Beau, and she liked the work that I produced there. And she saw me go to the UK with a different patron that had offered a space, a studio, and some um, events there. And so I did that. Hey, right. Let's do something, right. and so we um, we finally got it together, and then we set the date. And then I, uh, Rhiannon Hopley is a um, a Sydney-based photographer, so I invited her to join in on that show, and that ended up being kind of a great experience because she showed work that she created in Port Vale. It was not really planned that we show that same body of work, but. In the end, that's what worked we decided out. and it worked out really great. And it's this circle of artists that keep coming Wonderful. back on each other. We keep running into each other Wonderful. in different parts of the world and going, hey, why don't we do this project that's together? Awesome. And now we should maybe, maybe we should think about this one. And uh -huh. I, I did just meet some people in New Orleans this week, so I'm hoping the same kind of thing happens. I, I talked to a gallery there about some of the artists that I've met out traveling about coming together and doing an event there. And so keep us in mind in yeah, all right. this. Yeah. Bring your bring your people over here. Yeah, well, 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 part of the thing that we want to do as a collective is have some rotating exhibits based Super. on the work that we work. So maybe that'd be great. Here, that'd be fun. That'd be great. <laughs> and so, how can folks uh, keep up with you? I'm on Instagram with okay. um, Toby Penny. That's T O B Y P E N N E Y, and that's the easiest, most up to the day kind of situation. I do have a website, and that's Toby Penny Artist. But to be honest, I don't. Really but every few months, okay. I kind of forget that I have it. Right. So, you know, Instagram is so easy. When I was younger, I was much more diligent about keeping my website. You know, maybe once or twice a month I would update it, and now it's... You're too busy. It's, but it's not <laughs> even that. It's just like right there on my phone, Instagram says, right. well, what are you going to tell us today? What are you going to show us yeah. today? And then I do, and then conversations start, and you know, you're off on some other 
you're going to France. France. I'm sure you're going to France or, you know, we're thinking about going to Greece this spring. I think that would be a fun one. So, are you going to show art there or just? I hope, I hope just to make something happen. Great. I mean, that's Great. the whole point Great. of some of the travel is, is right. to see what we can do again exactly. next time. And, uh, I didn't, when I, I've always, when I travel, you know, keep, keep your lines of communication open, but I've never really realized just how um, people really want to are craving connections. So hmm. if you're willing to, to say, hey, well, maybe we should do this. Maybe we should, maybe we can make this happen. So there's a possibility that they'll ignore you or say no, but I, apparently that's not the highest possibility lately. So no. it's, just, it's good to reach out to people. Wonderful. Say, I, I like what you're doing. Maybe we can do something together. Wonderful. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is fun.